I came to Goldman Sachs at the end of 1985 and I worked in what basically was a, a very early quant group. Um, mostly the people had no background in finance but learned finance on the job. I built models uh, which involved more like a mix of physics skills and modeling. I built software to run the models and I dealt with the traders uh, to try to interact with them about what was the best way to use it and get their feedback into what might or might not make sense. A model doesn't stand on its own two feet. It tries to understand something by comparing it to something else you already understand. You know, I like to say that if somebody gives you a model, you can always say why, because they have to justify the analogy that they're making. Whereas if somebody gives you a theory, there are no more whys to ask. It's just the question of, is that, does that capture reality or doesn't? Bankers still do rely on models in the wake of the financial crisis. There were sort of people who said, you should just be empirical and not rely on models at all, but I don't think that's even possible. It's, it's human to model and it's human to make theories. You can't just look at data and expect it to tell you the answer. You have to put some structure on it. So nobody's going to stop using them. The question is really remaining aware of what their limitations are. What shocks me is um, people got bailed out and um, got the upside of their investments but never had to face the downside of their risk. And um, I think it's left a very bad stain on um, and moral incentives for people, the idea that, that you can make money when things are good, but the, the public and the taxpayers are going to bail you out when things are bad. What I've tried to make clear in this book is that models, especially in finance, models often look like theory, but it's only a superficial resemblance. They're not totally useless. Really all models fail is partly the point of my book, although some worse and some better. Part of the question is how true is it, but part of the question is how useful is it despite its faults. And one should never forget that in the end you're trying to push something beyond the point of wisdom and to the point of hubris. Hopefully it can help investors too in terms of understanding what sort of techniques and what sort of assumptions are going into the models that people use to value securities and to understand that in the end, which is the point I try to make you dealing with human beings and human beings aren't really modelable in the way that inert and um, material systems are.